folks. This is Rose from In Rose's Garden, and today we're going to work on a bracelet from our bargain bead box for August Peach Sorbet. Now this is going to be a two-strand rosary style uh, bracelet, and I've got all kinds of goodies out here. Hopefully I can make the two strands match up pretty good, but we'll find out. So let's turn down, and I will show you what I have planned. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a crystal, a bead cap, a rhodonite, bead cap, come on baby, let's go, Come on, bead cap, let's go on. Silly thing. Guess it doesn't want to go on right now. And then another crystal. So now that we've got these pieces on here, we're going to take our one step looper. This is the 1.5 millimeter loop. I like a smaller loop, so that's why I have the 1.5. Take hold of our eye down here so we can push this up to where we want it to be, at the direction we want it to be, and then snip. And it didn't cut off of the extra wire, which is very bizarre. Well, we know what to do with that. We'll just get our clippers out and do it ourselves. There's our flush cutter. We'll cut right there where it should have come off. And then we will take my round nose pliers. And because a lot of times I find the looper doesn't close the loop all the way, I will close it. So there is what the first one. And we're going to do this. And then we're just going to make a rosary chain, sort of, with all these pieces. So again, it's the crystal, the bead cap, rhodonite, bead cap, come on bead cap, bing, and then the crystal. Get our looper out again. Push it through here and through our little hole here on the other side. And then push it all the way up till it hits the crystal here. And then we're going to hold this so we get it the, the direction we want it and loop. Now see this one looped just fine. Cut the piece off and even looped around pretty good, though it did get a little bit larger than I would have liked. But if that happens, you can always just take it and loop it around some more to take some of the sizing out. So then we'll go like this, bring this one over again, and we're just gonna keep going up the line until we get enough of these to finish this off the way we want to. I've got a few more, I did a few more off camera so that we have only got one more to go um, as far as our loops are concerned. So of course that's one crystal, bead cap, rhodonite, bead cap, and crystal. So now we'll loop this one and hope, and I think we may actually even be more than we need um, as far as uh, the chain pieces are concerned. We'll line them up on the ruler and see where they seem to end up being um, when we 
get to that point. So there we go. Again, we didn't close all the way, which is never a surprise to me, but it's easily done. So that would be our last piece. So let's get the ruler out and see how long this ends up being once we put it together. So here's our ruler. And we'll put these right beside each other since they were, are going to hook together. Ah, that's saying only six inches. We need seven. So, I think we may need to get one more of these out because this is going to be put on with a jump ring. We need at least one of these. And if we wanted to, bing, we could put a double one in here somewhere, but I don't, I don't want to do that. So let's get one more of these out, and then we will see if we decide we need another rhodonite com combo, too. We've got one more out, and since we're going to jump ring this on, I think we will probably be all right without another rhodonite piece, but we will put these aside until we get to the, the other pieces done and decide then. So let's put all of these goodies right over here. We will put them together in a bit. Actually, I could put them together right now because I know the pattern I want them in, which is, um, you know, one of these, one of these, etc. And they're gonna hook right together, so no problem. So let's just open up one of our links it doesn't matter which one you open. And put these on and then close them back up. There you. Nope. Now this would be a pretty little delicate uh, bracelet all on its own without my um, adding the second strand, but we're going to add a second strand and I'll show you about that in just a minute.
Isn't it pretty? So. Now what I'm going to do is because I've got the one strand all the way done and if we add more, well it depends on what we want to add. I could add either the, this piece or this piece but I think it would be the rhodonite. So we're going to hook this up right here to this side and then we're going to see what it would be like if I added if, if it would be big enough without having another piece in here. So let's get a couple of jump rings out. Well, actually, we're just going to get one for right now because we don't need two right now. We're just going to hook it right onto this uh, bracelet piece. Now I've got some uh, Tinky Tots, and we're just going to hook this onto here. And close it up come on little tinky top don't fight with me here but you do want to fight with me I don't like fights stop it Nothing like a tiny jump ring being difficult. You come back here. Now, if I decide it's being too difficult, that it's too small, I can always uh, switch this to the next size up, which are on a shelf right behind me. So let's see what we got here. Oh, since I told you I was going to change you, you'll do it right away. Okay, so then this will go. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking I might need that last uh, piece. Let's check and see what it looks like on our bracelet sizer. And it can use the last piece too. So one more piece to go on this side, and that is, of course, our um, little crystal bead cap. Rhodonite bead cap. And crystal. So now we'll get our looper back out and do this this last loop here on this side of our bracelet. Up through here we go through the little hole back here and push her all the way up to the crystal and push. Now can see that we're definitely not closed because our little crystal went all the way up and tried to go away. So there we go. All done. So now we'll hook that baby on to there and then we could actually hook it to the other side if we wanted to. I'm not going to yet because I want to make sure that I get a comparable length in this other one, the other branch we're going to make of this. So, first we're going to just put this guy on, open this loop up, slide him on the end here, and close it. So, there's this side of our, our bracelet all finished. Anyway, I'd call it all finished because I don't think it's going to need any more than that. 
So now we need our pins up here and we're going to work on our second row. So for the second row, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a pin just like I had before. This one's pretty racked out, but that's all right. Put it on here. Where's our bead caps? We're going to put bead cap on here. Then we're going to put garnet. Well, if I can find its hole. There we go. A little daisy spacer. Garnet. One of the little bead caps. And one of the shell beads. So that's going to be one section. It's about the length of this one. So this is our first section. So we're going to get this in here. Come here, you. Down and over. And I got that not quite the same, going the same direction as it's little, the buddy on the other side. So we will have to straighten that some, which is a simple matter of taking and doing a that. So there is the first one done. Now the second set is going to be crystal, daisy, garnet, Well, if I can find one with a hole, where the hole is on one of these guys. There we go. Daisy and crystal. And then we'll do the looper on this one. This is our second one. So we'll have multiples of these. And they're going to hook together right here, like these ones did over here. But we got these two different patterns. So up and through. Oop. So we should need at least five of each of these. One, two, three, four, five. We had six of the rhodonite, so we may need six of this first one. One, two, three, four, five. Because this is going to, to behave like this, and this one's going to go here. But it's looking like they might be a little longer than I was thinking they would be, so we may not get the whole amount that we want. So we'll just go to it and see what shows up. Since they're going and looking like they're going to be longer than our original strands, I maybe should take out one of these garnets so that it will shorten it up some. And I'm thinking that might be the best thing to do because like I say, this piece is showing to be a little longer than that one. See how it's about uh, the eye higher? And this one is definitely larger than this one. So I'm thinking if we take out one of the garnets here on this, we should be able to maybe make a, a smaller piece here. So let's take this out of here. And we'll just take out the garnet and the spacer. And we'll see how um, how that spacing works with the, 
with just the um, bead caps and the garnet. Oops, bead cap the wrong way. Has to go this way of the shell. There we go. Now we will loop this. Come on, go through the hole. There we go. Now we gotta move this down. There we go. Let's get our little pliers out here and tighten this baby up a little bit. Now let's compare them and see how they are looking now compared to this. Now see, it's if anything, it might be just a teeny touch smaller and that's good because we want it between the two when they come together, we want them to be about the same size as the other side. So what we will do now is just do up a bunch of these so we've got them to put together. I'm just going to quickly make these combos up with the pattern that we have set here with the crystal, the daisy, the garnet, Come on. The garnets are uh, <laughs> sort of hard to find their hole because they're so tiny. But they're also very pretty. So, Come on, you. Where's your hole? Where, where is your hole at? Crystal, not garnet. There we go. Daisy. Crystal. And I believe I need five of these so we'll do up five of these and one two three four five six of the others and we'll just sit here and get these done quickly now if we need to to because of a uh, difference in sizing as they go along we will add um, maybe a jump ring at, or two at the end but we'll see what we need to do as we do it One. So there's two of these, and as I said, we need five of these, and we need six of the little ones here with the shell and the garnets. And now I need to go find another crystal. But before we go bother to do that, let's just make up the other one, these, this style here, and then we'll find our other crystal. So we just need, we need one, two, three, four, five, six. So we need five more of this one. So it's a shell, a spacer, a garnet. One of the little bead cap spacers and a shell. Two. 
Now we'll just make the other, what is it, five? One, two, three, four, five, six. Now we need another four. So now we have the six of these. These seem to be extras. And we have to get one more of these to make their five. We need one crystal. We got the other crystal and I put the other excess things away. So let's get this crystal through here. Come on, go through the little hole back there. There we go. And then we got to get hold of our looper right here. And over we go. Now we'll straighten this baby up. There we go. And now we'll put the looper away. We shouldn't need it anymore. And we're going to get our pliers out so we can put these pieces together. So to start this, we're just going to start with one of these and go on up the line like we did with the other one. Except for it's going to be these other beads instead of, instead of this one. These ones. So hopefully when we get done, we'll be about the same length. If we end up not being about the same length, we can put some jump rings in um, on whichever one is not the right length to, to add some length to it. So we're just going to go like so. And hopefully we're going to be about the right length. I think we may need to add a jump ring, though, to this strand. Maybe even two. We'll see. But let's start putting her together. we go. It's all put together and I can see that it's definitely longer already. Even with having shortened this up with taking um, the extra beads out. Oop, that one has a kink in it. Maybe not as long as I thought. But it is still longer as you can see. So we need to add a little bit of something to this side so that it is about the same length because we don't want to take it anything out because then we are way off as far as length is concerned now if I wanted to what I could do to make this second this first strand shorter or longer I should say is to pull some of these apart and put some jump rings in between the uh, strands. Which might just be the thing to do because we do need Let's see see it's starting to go off right here because by here it's now not hitting the same spot which I would like it to be about right here and see it goes pretty good for two and then the third one starts to slide out. So what I think we want to do 
is we're going to well let's see how much of a difference the length is if it's not a really big uh, difference I will just use jump rings on the ends to make the now see that's eight inches and this one is seven and a about seven and a half, seven and three quarters. So we need about at least a quarter of an inch. Maybe, oh, there's my missing crystal from earlier. Um, so in order to get this, le the length we need for the second strand, we need to do one of two things. We need to either A, pull something apart, as in take off a crystal on the end of either one of these. I mean, one of the shell beads to shorten its length up. Or, which we could do that, that would work. Because that would make it be about the same length. That's seven and a half see you again yeah yeah why don't we just do that that would be the simplest thing I think we'll take the two end pieces and just take this um, this one crystal off so I mean one shell bead off so what we'll do is we'll just open these back up doo -doo -doo. take it off do the same on this side. Okay. Now we'll get our looper back out because what we're going to do now is we're going to take one of these shells off either side along with one of the bead caps and then we will re-loop it with only one on here so that when we take them off come here you this this bead and this is going to be extra and we'll just re-loop it with just the smaller portion of it. Wow, that worked really easily. Okay, so now we'll just put this little bit on here. Go through here. It'll go on this end, and then we'll do the same over here. Cut this loop apart, take these two pieces off, take a new bead, a new uh, wire, take you out. Come on, go back in. Then we'll get our looper and loop this one. And it'll go on the other side. Just get rid of this trash. Now let's open this up and put these two up and put them on the ends and then we can compare see how we look this time. So we'll open this end up, put this side on, and 
Oops, there goes my ruler to the floor. Extra beat cap. Here you go. And now let's compare our lengths. Pretty darn perfect now. So now we just have to hook it on to our, um, get some more jump rings out and hook on to our um, ends. Okay, so we got a tiny jump ring here, one of our Tinky Tots. Open her up. Now we're going to go in one end of here. And it'll hook onto our clasp. Close it up. Okay. Now Looks like this one is still just a touch longer. If we roll it down like this, see how it's just a touch longer. So instead of using a Tinky Tot on this side, I'm going to get a medium one. See, it's just a touch bigger, and this one row is just a touch bigger. So if you wanted to really compare, you could see that I did that um, when I finish putting it together but most people aren't going to notice because it's just the difference in a jump ring so what we want to do is we want to bring these around like so and now we're going to take this bigger one of the two open it up and we're going to go in this side over here and then Bring our bracelet over, and ooh, we came undone. I'm gonna have to find out what's loose there. And, because we definitely don't want that in our rosary chain. So, okay, who has the loose opening here? You or you? Looks like you're fine. So, Ah, you're a teeny bit open. And weirdly enough, that opening is the regular eye pin, regular, rather than the looped part. So let's get you back in place, baby. We'll have to check all our connections and make sure that they're good and solid. Because that one obviously wasn't. Oh, here's one that's not quite closed either. We don't want that, so let's get it closed. There we go. And again, here's another one. So now, we're going to get our Tinky Tot out, and after I get this side connected, I'm going to recheck all of my connections and make sure that everything's still good. Um, there was three or four here that the eye pin side, the, the original eye, was not quite closed all the way. I'm not real thrilled about that thought. Okay, so now we need to bring her up and over and through here. Come on, go through there. Now close this baby up. Okay. And as you can see, that one bigger jump ring 
made that difference in that sizing. Isn't that pretty? Okay, let's go through this side and make sure all of our eyes are closed. This one looks just a teeny touch open. Not too much, but a little bit. There we go. Oops. I thought I was closing that tighter and I actually opened it up a little more. Okay, I think everything's good. So there we go. Our bracelet is all finished. Two strands, pretty much the same. And I think it turned out very pretty. Let's see how long it ended up being. It is seven inches. Oops. Now that little top strand is still looking like it may be just a teeny bit longer. because it does fall down further when we put it up here. Oops, we're twisted here. There we go. So it goes down to seven and a half, whereas the other one goes to seven and a quarter. But I think it's still a very nice size. Let's see if I can get it on my own wrist easily. Now I actually can usually get these kinds of clasps on because they're sliders. You just got to get them close to each other and then push once you, they are close. Ugh, I let that one go. Come on, baby. Turn you up so their face is over here. Come on. There we go. Of course, I've got it on so that it's in the front instead of the back. I don't really want the clasp in the front, so see if we can wiggle it around a little bit. I don't want to stress it too much by wiggling it too much, but it's a pretty little delicate bracelet. See? Like I said, the class needs to come over to the other side, but I can I actually probably could have got it on easier if I had started with this side. See how easy much easier that went? <laughs> but there we go. There is the bracelet. Isn't that pretty? And even though this one feels like it's still a little longer than the other one, it's not so much of a difference that I'm going to worry about it too much. I like the way it looks. I think it's very delicate, even with two strands. It's very pretty. Um, I hope you agree. And this, there we go. There's our little two-strand bracelet made from beads from our uh, August Bargain Bead Box Peach Sorbet. 
I think it turned out very pretty. I like it a lot. It's very delicate. And strangely enough, even though the um, rhodonite strand looks larger to me, it's the um, little little uh, garnet and crystal one that keeps wanting to uh, slide over the top. So we'll put this over and have the rhodonite one on top. There we go. There's our finished bracelet. As you can see, it's about seven and a quarter, seven and a half, uh, right in there. So it is really pretty a little bracelet made from the rhodonite, the garnet, the crystals, and the shell. There we go. Focus, there we are. So this has been Rose from In Rose's Garden. And again, we have been using beads from the Bargain Bead Boxes August Kit Peach Sorbet to make this beautiful little tiny delicate two-strand bracelet. See you later. Bye-bye.